Over the centuries, the church has simplified the Lenten observance to three prayer, fasting, and abstinence. Our Savior Jesus Christ taught us a formula of prayer in the Our Father. With gates to feast of Christ, St. Teresa of Avila prayed the Our Father, thereby offering us a classical definition of prayer. For her, Prayer is nothing else than an intimate sharing between friends. It means taking our time to be alone with him who we know loves us. Prayer, as much as it is intercessory, is also transformative. We hear of many complaining of their inability to pray well or pray effectively. But it seems that for an effective prayer encounter to be initiated, there are some benefits. I've got to this book. Welcome to Come Like Lightning Instructions Series. The theme for today is prayer and the three requisites for a viable Christian life. Prayer is coming before God in our Christian limits, in our duty and fulfillment to seek a relationship with God our Father, with Jesus our brother, and with the Holy Spirit who gives life to all our things. The first reflection and prayer are led to go nowhere. We need to see God in silence so that we may listen to Him, to the truth of the gospel, to respond to it, and to gaze on this challenge in it. Now, there are many requisites for effective prayer, but Teresa provides just three love, attachment, and unity. These conditions, if properly cultivated, will enhance our prayer life and will become means for a viable Christian life, especially in this season of things. What is love? The heart of an effective prayer is love. And love is the only reality that will ultimately change us. Prayer is the key to freedom of heart. It is a way of opening ourselves to the embrace of God's love. We love God when we keep His commandments and abstain from sin. At the core of St. John on the Cross's teaching is the fact that love is the only reality that will ultimately change the heart from within. Love expresses itself at all. Even this is not Lent, many of us eat excessively and waste food, whereas many others have nothing to eat. One who is controlled by love remembers the poor in their poverty, respects them in their dignity, and reassures them in their uncertainty. Detachment. In detachment, we free our hearts from undue attachments to worldly things persons, and even the self. In the Theresian Kamel, Lent is much more concerned with charity than its negative observances. One of the greatest insights of St. John of the Cross is that the best growth, perhaps the only growth, is downwards. The only growth is downwards. We grow not by addition, was by subtraction. 
not by having more, but by having less. Not by saying yes to ourselves, but by learning to say no. More, bigger, better are the catch words of the commercial world, but they are not parts of John's vocabulary and, in fact, Catholic spirituality. John speaks much more about letting go, about not desiring, about attachment. It's not the things that we possess that hinder us, it is just the things that possess us. Thus, in this season of Lent, John invites us to travel light and with freedom of heart. Let us free our hearts from the things that lead us away from God. Let us free ourselves from people who lead us to sin. Let us detach from our comfort zones and reach out to others in sacrifice, love, and compassion. Humility. The most fundamental virtue in Teresa is humility. In her interior castle, Teresa noted that we shall never completely know ourselves if we don't strive to know God. By gazing at his grandeur, we get in touch with our own lowliness. By looking at his purity, we shall see our own fears. By pondering his humility, we shall see how far we are from being humble. Thus, his humility is a receptive knowledge, which, however, is not self-centered, but God-centered. At the beginning of Lent, specifically on Ash Wednesday, we sign ourselves with Ash, in which we consider our nothingness, and then consider God's greatness, in whose presence we stand. God is supreme with the truth, and to be humble is a word with the truth. It often comes as a surprise that Camelites speak so little about ways and methods of prayer. Instead, they go straight to the heart of what prayer is all about, that is, exposure to this self surrendering God. Their concern does not consist in the knowledge that we are saved, but in the assurance that we are loved. No matter how much you think you are searching for God, John of the Cross reminds us, He is searching for you much more. The one we are searching for is here in the very depths of our being, inviting and waiting for our response. And we respond to Him through love, attachment, and humility. Thank you for joining us today on the second week of our Lenten Talk Series. Remember to follow us also our three days Lenten Retreat coming up on the 25th to 27th of March in preparation for the Pascal Retreat. Thank you.